Hi everyone, Joe here from H145 Rotor Sims, and I'm gonna show you today how to use the Microsoft Pop-Out Manager and get some touchscreens configured. So let's start diving right into it. So first things first, you're gonna go down to your Windows taskbar, type Windows S, and then you can type in display settings. Now once you do that and you click here, this will bring you to this screen. Now these are the physical layouts of your actual screens. This one here is my screen that is for my primary display or what I'll show Microsoft Flight Simulator in. The screen below, this is for my MIP and the H145 to display my MFDs. And below that I have a GNS 750. Um, there's actually uh, one screen but there's two units. And then on the right, this is the monitor I'm using to emulate the iPad and the H145. Now, monitors two and four are touchscreens, and we'll get into how to map those in a bit later. Okay, so after you have these rearranged, and make sure that you arrange them as they are physically, because you can move these around. So this is gonna impact how your mouse is going to move. Like right now, it's off the screen, and I'm going down, but I'm actually, my mouse is somewhere in here. So you wanna make sure that this is set up as extend display. Okay, and uh, this monitor here I have for my iPad, this is set up for portrait flip, um, iPad emulation. It's an actual monitor, it's not an iPad. So next we need to look at the, um, the taskbar behavior. So we'll go to taskbar settings, and then down here, we're gonna go to taskbar behaviors. Now what you want to do is make sure that you have this unchecked, show my, desk, my taskbar on all displays. So you don't want this really on the all displays um, only because you may want to use a black background because this will help blend with the MFDs. And what you want to click on is calibrate the screen for pen or touch input. I'll bring this into view. And what we can see is we have our four displays. Now my two touch displays are number two and number four. All we need to do here is click on setup. And what's going to happen is you're going to see this white screen and it wants you to identify your touch screens. So in this case, um, we're not going to touch my main monitor because it's not a, a main screen to touch. It doesn't have a touch feature. So what we're going to do, it says, if this is not the tablet PC screen, press enter to move to the next screen. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to press enter. Now that is going to bring me over to my MIP. And sure enough, this is also not a touch screen, but my GNS down here is and my iPad emulation. Okay, so now we have our GNS. We're going to press and click on that. And now we're gonna press enter. And then now we're gonna go ahead and click this screen here, which is our last touch screen. I'm gonna click it and we are done. So everything went black. So that means now these two screens are actually set up to understand that Windows knows that they can be touched. This is gonna be very important when we go into the pop-out manager. Don't go to flightsim.io because then you'll need an account and all that. So. The quickest way is this GitHub URL, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna paste this as a link or uh, down below in the video so you can go ahead and copy that and just pop it in. Once you're at this screen, you're gonna scroll down. It's version 4.1.1, that's what I'm using, and I also have all the updates for Flight Simulator 2020. So we click on uh, this popout manager.zip. Now once that's done, we will open up that zip folder Obviously, we will go ahead and extract it, exe file here, and this is going to bring up the pop-out manager. Well, I have the H145 sitting here at MIGS Field. Um, the aircraft is fully running. I have all my MFDs up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna create a new profile, and that's over here, add a new aircraft profile. And then you can copy from a previous profile if you move things around or whatever. But in this case, let's type in H145 test and then click accept. Now, as you can see, we now have a blank canvas. So where it says click here to add, we're gonna add seven pop-outs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're just gonna scroll up to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, Go down here and seven. So you could theoretically name these what they actually are, that's up to you. Um, personally, it might be easier just to go from left to right up to down like we counted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so what we're gonna do is now click the identify button and we're gonna do this 
on MFD number one. So I'll hit one, identify, and it just needs to be somewhere in the center. Number two, identify. And then we're gonna go to next one, number three, identify. So we're clicking and they change colors. And then we have two more, identify the GNS down on the left hand and then the right hand, which is right here. Okay, so now all of these are identified. The next thing to do is to click on this green, which looks like a toggle of a target, toggle editing on, of panel source. Now, once we uncheck that or click it, now we have the actual pop-outs are ready to go. Now, when we click the start pop-out, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pop each one of these out. Now, they may appear off screen because I'm using a very wide monitor, uh, but I'll get them back in view soon. Okay, so the pop-out process is starting. Okay, so I have all of my pop-outs ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro and kind of show you how we're gonna drag and drop these into the cockpit and start getting things lined up. Drop this uh, pop-out manager down, down here just so I can kind of see the, the window. Um, and we can see it in our view here because we're now actually in the cockpit. And I'm gonna start dragging and dropping all of my windows. So I'll start, I guess, with MFD number seven. So I'm, again, remember how I said that arranging our sources exactly the way you're laid out is important. So I just drag this down. Otherwise my mouse, if this display source was on the right hand side, you'd be dragging down and you actually have to go to the right, which would be very confusing. So number seven, we're gonna drag down here temporarily. We're gonna get number six. Drag this down temporarily. We're going to get our iPad one here. So now we're bringing this in the display and then moving over here. Okay. And now we're going to take number four, which was here. We're going to go ahead and take number three, which was here. And then we're going to take number two, dragging down. And that one was here and we just want to get them pretty close. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this one and drag this one over to number one. Okay, so now that we have our displays located, so if you were to close all these pop-outs right now and then you were to start this process, pop-out manager is gonna pop these things exactly where you have them. So let's start with, guess we'll start with the number four on the right hand side only because it's probably the easiest to see within the view. So you have top left width and height. So the top is gonna adjust this panel moving this way. Um, the left obviously is gonna be actually left and right depending if you're doing a positive number or a negative number. And then the width and the height is obviously the size of the screen. So what I like to do is I like to kind of get this pre-formatted. So I'll go to this left hand corner till I get that diagonal symbol and kind of just lower it down. And then I'll go ahead and start stretching this a little bit and you'll see it starts moving, okay? Now at one point, you're gonna wanna go ahead and probably get rid of the uh, top bar, that's up to you. Um, I do in all of mine. So in that case, in the pop-out manager, so under number four, there's a drop-down arrow and that arrow will display some other options. And those options are always on top, full screen mode, high title bar, auto game refocus and floating panel toggle. Now in this case, I'm gonna click on hide the title bar. So that's gonna get rid of that white bar that's up there and we're actually pretty close. So we could see that on the right hand side of this display, it's a little too far over to the right. So in this case, we're on panel name number four, we have left and right, and we can move it one pixel or 10. I'm gonna show you 10 just so you can see how it kind of moves over. You can also use a keyboard so this here, I'm actually gonna use the one pixel because we're pretty close. Okay, but we know that we're kind of off because I can see that my decision altitude, decision height, my barrel, and my acknowledgement keys are locked in, but my clock is kind of off and so is my SCT and my SVS. So we may wanna play with the, the sizing a little bit and the width, maybe we could do 10 pixels another 10 pixels, and then we can see it's kind of going off the screen, but we're getting much closer. Another 10 pixels. And now I'll go back to my left side and I'll move this over a couple of pixels, maybe just one or two, let's see. 
Now we're getting a little bit closer. Okay. And also what we're using for our touch screens. In this case, of course, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven um, are going to be touched. So it's actually six and seven because um, we only have two displays, but you have to enable the touch on five, six, and seven. So that is right here. So right now I'm looking at the iPad and nothing's happening because it doesn't know. It's not like the, it recognizes I'm touching, but it's not passing through the Flight Simulator 2020. And that's because in your pop-up manager, you need to enable the touch. So we're going to enable the touch for five. And that's this hand icon. Once it's green, you have it. And so now I should be able to use the touch. So in this case, I'm typing or clicking on equipment and setup. We'll look down at the GNS. I can click on my weather. Back, I can click on my map. And I'll check this one too, make sure that we're having touch. And we are. So after you've got everything all set up, really, really important is that you want to lock the profile and you can do that. There's this lock icon, it says lock and unlock pop-out manager, and that's all dialed in. So now every time you go ahead and run this pop-out, it'll place these things exactly where they were before. So I hope this video was helpful. If anybody has any information or would like to add anything to this, uh, just leave it in the comments because you know it's one of those things everybody has probably four ways to get to the same solution. Uh, I'll leave some links down below, some helpful connectors. Like for example, I'm using this 90 degree connector down here um, for this particular iPad. Now, if you are mounting inside a frame like this, the, the, the space that you have to actually get into this particular display is very minimal. So you need some super small 90 LED uh, USB adapters as well as an HDMI or mini HDMI to regular HDMI for this particular display. And I'll leave links down below. Yes, <clears throat> they are Amazon affiliates. I do get a little bit off of each one. Hopefully that'll help promote the channel and start pushing it in the right direction because this is going to be focused on the H145. And we're gonna get into the full build. We're gonna go through you know, everything that I've done in Google SketchUp, um, uh, people I use to go ahead and make this possible. And I wanna just wanna extend a quick thank you out to the entire Flight Sim community. All of you are just simply amazing. I love it. And um, you should make a donation to uh, the gentleman who did create uh, the pop-out manager because it is an amazing tool. A lot of work went into that development. Even if it's just a quarter, 10 cents, a dollar, whatever, um, it, it would help them, uh, help the developer. So definitely think about that and take that in consideration. All right, guys, thanks so much and look forward to the next videos.